with the end of semester one coming to a close and final exams and EQAO for grade nine students um, coming around the corner, I thought it'd be a good idea to uh, head over to Knowledge Hook um, to use their free tool game show, including the content that's already included in their product um, for EQAO practice material. So let's take a look at how we can quickly um, get our account set up and uh, run a game show within a couple minutes. So first we're going to click on knowledgehook.com and we're going to go over to the login button. Uh, at this point you're going to, uh, if you already have an account, it'll probably log you straight in. Um, otherwise we're going to have you register your own account. Uh, I'm going to skip that step today. Um, it's very, very simple. Just need an email address, um, a detail, details about, you know, where, which school district you're from. And um, they, they really just want to have an idea of where the tool is being used and again it is all 100% free. So we'll click on uh, register, you'll get your login. Once you have it, log into the tool. We're going to have you, uh, right now you'll see all of my classes are there because this is my account. You'll only have a add class button. So we're going to have you click on the add class button and uh, you're going to fill in some details about your current class. Um, we're going to have you pick Game Show, which is the free tool. There is a premium tool for self-paced um, practice that students can use on their own time. The free tool is kind of like Kahoot um, for math class. So here I'm going to say I'm a grade 9 applied teacher, but keep in mind that uh, regardless of which course you select, you can create your own content as well as select content from any of the other courses at any time. So if you have a split class, uh, grade 7, 8 teacher, um, it's completely up to you if you want to create two classes, one for seven, one for eight, um, and you can fish around for different content uh, based on the needs of your students. So here we've got uh, grade nine applied um, selected. You can call the course whatever you'd like, period one, semester one, or whatever, uh, or maybe grade nine applied, whatever uh, you feel is most appropriate. We'll select our term, whether you're a full year or a semestered system. This is just for them uh, to better understand um, when your class comes to an end. If you have the premium tool, they use this to determine when they can send out banners and medals and all these other cool little things that uh, students earn throughout the process. So we're going to pick fall 2016. We're going to add this class and it'll jump me right into that class. Um, I'm just going to hop over to the student tab just to let you know that uh, at any point you can have students create accounts that are linked to this, this course. You'll notice in the top right corner that there's a class code. Um, when I click on add student, it's no work for the teacher. Uh, the students just follow these four steps. So I would project this up on the screen. They follow the steps and then they will have um, their account created. Uh, in about two minutes and it'll all be linked to your class. It just makes uh, running a game show a little bit faster um, but you're also welcome to use guest accounts where students just use their class code to log in every day. So um, let's hop back over to the activities tab and uh, we'll have a look at, uh, at some of the material. Now Right now, recall that I selected Grade 9 Applied. There's a course selector. I can pick any course to find any material and run it um, in my class. I can also make copies of it and modify it. So this is all the Grade 9 Applied content organized by strand. You'll notice to the side you get a little uh, preview window showing all uh, little, little previews of the types of problems. Um, I can click on View and go ahead and uh, add, subtract, modify those problems. Um, and even add my own custom problems. But today we want to look at some of the uh, EQAO material that they have on there. Um, they have them organized in their own course. So they have grade 9 applied EQAO material as its own course. And uh, you'll notice they have three of the release material tests um, that are available on the EQAO website. Um, they've just basically taken that, that content and uh, they've included it here so that you can run them in your class really easily without any hassle. So there's 31 questions here. This includes the open response problems, but they have made them uh, more multiple choice like. Now, I always encourage students to show their work and they, with this tool, you have the option to actually upload solutions so that you can display them on the screen and talk about the different strategies um, as you're going. So it's a really cool way to, uh, to not only review some material, uh, understand where students are at and where we need to improve over these last few weeks, and um, 
also so that they can look at different strategies. So if I want to run the game show as is, I can go ahead and do that. Um, there's 31 questions, that's quite a bit. I can also choose to make a copy. Now, when I make this custom copy, I can go ahead and name it whatever I'd like. I'm just going to leave it as is for now, but, um, you know, name it however you please. Um, what that's going to do is copy all 31 questions, and at that point, I'm free to do whatever I want with them. I can modify them, I can uh, delete some, I can leave 10, I can um, reorganize them however I choose. Um, another option is I can actually go to individual questions and copy them over to a custom game show. So instead of copying the whole game show, I can cus custom copy individual questions. Let's say I only want five questions. Rather than deleting um, you know, a, a huge chunk of questions, I can just like add five to my own custom game show and edit them and move them around using the tools on the screen. So pretty easy stuff. And uh, at this point, uh, it looks like my uh, my done editing button is covered up at the top, probably because I've sized the window um, pretty small to make it fit on the screen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, the done editing button at the bottom of the screen. That'll do the same thing for me. And uh, I should be ready to, uh, to run this game show. So I'm going to hit the uh, live game show button in a second here, noticing that the uh, course code is in the top right of the screen. So um, that's going to be important for students logging in. Um, on my student screen to the far right, I'm going to type in playkh.com, playkh.com. They can log in using their account, or they can simply log in as a guest using the class code. So when I set up my game show here, I'm going to go with a non-competitive leaderboard, but you can change this how you please. I usually use a uh, celebration threshold of 80 percent means if 80 percent of the class gets the question right they get a little celebratory animated gif upload solutions a must for me because I want to see student work um, I don't always require student accounts simply because if you have a new student come to your class or if you have a guest in the room it's nice for them to be able to play and I always remove the time bonus so now once I click run I can actually go ahead and type in the class code on my student devices or they just log in using an account. Um, if they're logging in as a guest it tries to encourage them to create an account so that they don't have to be a guest next time. For now though we're just going to go ahead and run it as a guest. We're going to type in our name, pick an avatar, and I'm going to join the room. And you'll notice on my teacher screen Mr. Pierce has appeared. So I can wait for a good chunk of my class to join and then press the start button. Just note that after you start the game, students can still join at any time, so there's no uh, worry if uh, a student comes late to class or anything like that. So let's go ahead and uh, click on start game. You'll notice the first question comes up on the teacher screen on the left and the student device on the right. Uh, it is a multiple choice problem. Um, something that's pretty cool is that students can actually um, not only select their answer but then upload their solution after because we only have one person playing as soon as I select an answer it will end the question automatically since there's no one else left however usually the teacher can end the question at their discretion or once the entire class has submitted so I'm just gonna pick any random answer here let's uh, go with two to seven I'm gonna submit it I find out that wasn't quite the answer um, and you'll notice on the teacher side because the question ended there was only one person playing so everyone's answer is in um, I see all the results um, typically the students see this upload solution button once they submit even before the question ends so at this point I have them upload a solution on a laptop you're gonna have to take a picture with a webcam or whatever on a iPhone or a Android device it's a little easier they just hit the camera button and it'll automatically upload I'm just gonna pick a random uh, image here and uh, and we'll upload that so it's not really going to be related to this problem I'm just picking any image and uh, there you go you'll notice it uploads I get a notification and as the teacher I can actually display the student work on the screen so this is really useful if you know I'm I'm doing these problems and I have a bunch of solutions that we can take a look at so students don't feel that there's only one way to arrive at the answer um, so I get this image I can reveal who submitted it I typically don't. If they want to talk about it, they can raise their hand and, and, and talk about it. Um, 
I can scroll through the different solutions that have been uploaded, and I can even rotate the image if it comes in sideways. So pretty, uh, pretty awesome tool. And uh, once we go ahead and close that down, we'll end this problem. And actually, um, normally we would go on to the next question, but at any point I can finish the game. So in this case, um, we're going to go ahead and click Finish Game. It'll basically just put the teacher and the students through a quick little exit survey just to uh, see if there was any problems with the game show. Students get a summary of how they did and uh, points that if they have an account will actually stay with them in their account so they can kind of compete a little bit there in a, in a gamified sort of way. Um, for the teacher, the comments box is really important. If you had uh, struggle doing something, couldn't figure something out, um, they're usually very responsive and getting back to you uh, within a day or so. So um, that's about it. So students, if they create an account, they can actually run the game shows that you have already run in class at home on their own time, which is great. You can also add parents so that they get notifications and updates um, on how uh, their sons or daughters are doing. So pretty cool tool. Um, again, pretty easy to, uh, to set up for the first time. And then once you're set up, uh, even easier still, simple login, select your content, and uh, run your game show. The reporting is great. Uh, we only did one question, but normally um, we would see a list of the students. We'd see how they did. You can download an Excel file, uh, and you can actually go question by question looking at student solutions and, uh, and so forth. So really good, good tool um, to help you as you prepare for your final exams and your EQAO uh, coming up at the end of the semester. So good luck, and uh, email me if uh, you have any questions on uh, how you can use this tool in your own classroom.